artificial intelligence has a huge problem. A single chat GPT query can take up to 10 times the electricity of a Google search. And while power demand from data centers has already doubled over the last five years, Goldman Sachs predicts that it'll grow by another 160% by 2030. So in this episode, I'll highlight a few companies that are tackling this exact problem, positioning them to win big no matter which AI companies come out on top, making them a great way to get rich without getting lucky. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. First things first, I'm not here to waste your time. So here's exactly what I'm going to cover. I'll go over the big power problem that AI is causing right now. I'll talk about Vertiv, which is a company that provides power and thermal management solutions for data centers, Broadcom, which designs custom power efficient AI chips for tech giants like Google and Meta platforms, and Marvell, a company that also makes efficient AI chips and switches for data centers. It's important to understand just how much power AI is projected to consume over the next few years. So let me break that down first. A single chat GPT prompt costs 2.9 watt hours. That's like keeping a five watt LED bulb on for a little over half an hour, while using AI to generate a single image can cost as much electricity as charging your phone. Compare that to a Google search, which also takes in a query and returns text and images, but only uses around 0.3 watt hours in the process. A couple of watt hours may not seem like much, but there are roughly 9 billion Google searches every day. And if we move them all to generative AI, it would take on the order of 10 terawatt hours more to serve all of those requests. That's enough electricity to power almost a million homes for an entire year. But this is actually a bad comparison because people don't use generative AI tools the same way they use Google. For example, ChatGPT tends to be more of a dialogue between the user and an AI model that can really rack up the number of queries compared to a Google search. And that's just the inference side of the story. Training and retraining large AI models is very energy intensive too, especially when we're talking about trillion parameter models. For example, GPT-4 took over 50 gigawatt hours to train, or about 0.02% of the electricity generated by the entire state of California over a year. As an investor, this worries me for three reasons. First, the amount of compute needed to train AI models has been doubling roughly every six months. Talk about exponential growth. Second, that gets multiplied by the number of foundation models being trained, which is also growing exponentially. And third, even though you can use ChatGPT almost anywhere in the world, it consumes energy only at the server's location. Energy accounts for up to 70% of a data center's total cost of operations, so the hardware in the racks, how the data center facility is designed and laid out, and even the age of its local power grid all really matter. And by the way, the average age of the US power grid is around 40 years old, with over a quarter of the grid being 50 years old or older. And AI only makes this problem worse. For example, Nvidia's previous generation A100 GPUs use about 400 watts, but the current generation of Hopper GPUs run at 700 watts. That's almost twice the power, and four or five times the power of CPU-based servers. It's worth noting that the H100 GPUs are up to nine times faster at AI training and 30 times faster for inference over the A100s. So the power efficiency of Nvidia's GPUs is going way up with every generation, but power demand is going up faster. So it takes more than just high performance GPUs to solve this problem. Let's start with cooling, since that accounts for up to 40% of a data center's energy usage, which means 28% of the total cost of operations. Vertiv Holdings, ticker symbol VRT, provides power and thermal management solutions for data centers, like their Liebert liquid cooling systems. These systems are built specifically for high density deployments, like the ones that power intense AI applications, providing cold plates and direct-to-chip cooling in a way that integrates with existing data center infrastructures, which is a big deal because around 90% of all server racks are air-cooled today. In fact, most data centers even run their H100 chips at low enough power so they can be air-cooled. So a lot of them will need to make massive infrastructure changes to support direct-to-chip liquid cooling for NVIDIA's upcoming Blackwell systems if they want to run those chips at peak performance. That includes hyperscalers like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, 
all of which need to support power-hungry AI workloads for thousands of other businesses. Speaking of which, according to Market US, the global artificial intelligence market is expected to almost 12x over the next eight years, which is a compound annual growth rate of 36.8%. But many of the companies building the next generation of AI applications are not publicly traded. Think about the 90s and early 2000s. Companies like Amazon and Google went public very early in their growth cycle. But today, companies are waiting an average of 10 years or longer to go public. That means investors like us can miss out on most of the returns from the next Amazon, the next Google, the next Nvidia. So I spent a lot of time digging into this and the Fundrise Innovation Fund is a great way to invest in some of the best tech companies before they go public. Venture capital is usually only for the ultra wealthy, but Fundrise's Innovation Fund gives regular investors access to some of the top private pre-IPO companies on earth without breaking the bank. The Fundrise Innovation Fund also has an impressive track record, already investing over $100 million into some of the largest, most in-demand AI and data infrastructure companies. So if you want access to some of the best late stage AI companies before they IPO, check out the Fundrise Innovation Fund with my link below today. All right, so 90% of all server racks are air cooled today. But industry estimates suggest that up to 80% of data center cooling will become direct-to-chip liquid cooling over time. Direct-to-chip liquid cooling is where a heat-conductive copper plate sits on top of a chip, just like a normal heat sink. But instead of being air-cooled by a fan, the plate is connected to two pipes. One pipe brings in cool water to absorb the heat from the plate, and the other pipe moves hot water away. Direct-to-chip liquid cooling is up to 3,000 times more effective than air cooling and better cooling means that servers can be stacked closer together without overheating. Every data center has a fixed amount of space, so they need to optimize their cooling if they want to squeeze the most compute out of their entire facility. As a result, the liquid cooling market for data centers is expected to more than quadruple by 2030, which would be a compound annual growth rate of 27.6% for the next six years. And Vertiv definitely knows that. According to their quarter two earnings call, they're on track to expand their liquid cooling production capacity by a whopping 45X over the course of 2024. Vertiv also doubled their production capacity for power management products over the last three years, and they plan to double it again by the end of 2025. All of these expansions should lead directly to more revenue since Vertiv is currently limited by supply, not demand. Vertiv had a $7 billion backlog of orders at the end of quarter two, which was up 11% quarter over quarter and 47% year over year. Vertiv stock is already up around 120% year to date, and I definitely think they have plenty of room to run as the AI boom continues. Compute and connectivity are also energy intensive, so let's talk about them next. Today, Nvidia has a massive share of the data center GPU market, with estimates ranging from 92% all the way to 98% market share. But GPUs are not the only way to process intense AI workloads. Over the last three years, I've spent a lot of time covering the custom chips used by Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. These custom chips are called ASICs, application-specific integrated circuits, and they do exactly what their name implies. Their design is tailored to a specific application, which simplifies the chip's architecture. The result is a chip that can run a narrow set of workloads extremely efficiently, at the cost of supporting fewer kinds of workloads than more general processors like GPUs and CPUs. So as Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and their cloud clients need more support for a specific kind of workload, like running large language models, synthesizing speech from text, or generating images, they could make a chip for that workload and free up their more expensive NVIDIA infrastructure for other tasks. All three hyperscalers are making big investments into their own semiconductor supply chains to reduce their overall reliance on NVIDIA over time. Amazon has their Inferentia and Trainium chips for AI inference and training respectively. Microsoft has their Azure Maya accelerators. And of course, Google has their tensor processing units or TPUs. The demand for ASICs is so high that even Nvidia is building a new business unit focused on making custom chips for other companies, which could help extend their CUDA ecosystem to new kinds of chips. But Nvidia will have some serious competition in this space from rival companies like Marvell Technology and Broadcom. So let's talk about them next. Broadcom is the leader of the ASIC market, 
with a dominant 55-60% to 60% share and a major focus on AI and data center infrastructure. Broadcom co-designed the last six generations of Google's TPUs, and that partnership got extended to the next generation of TPUs as well, which shows just how sticky these chip design relationships can be once they're up and running. Google claims that their 6th generation Trillium TPUs are 67% more energy efficient than their current generation, with 4.7 times more peak compute performance. And JP Morgan analysts estimate that Broadcom's TPU program will generate $8 billion in revenue in 2024, and another $10 billion in 2025, and that's just from Google's TPUs. Broadcom is also behind every generation of the MTIA chips, which are Meta's training and inference accelerators. And Broadcom's ambitions for custom AI chips don't stop with Google or Meta. In July, Broadcom was rumored to be in talks with OpenAI to design ASICs for them as well. <laughs> but who knows what'll happen now that OpenAI's chief technical officer, Mira Murati, is leaving and OpenAI is becoming a for-profit company. Let me know if you want a separate deep dive on all of that and the resulting drama. But Broadcom makes more than just custom chips for tech giants. According to Broadcom CEO Hawk Tan, more than 99.5% of all internet traffic touches at least one Broadcom chip. Jim, I got to tell you, 99.5% of every bit of data that flows in the internet will cross at least one or more Broadcom chip. Broadcom has several lines of network switches that also use ASICs designed to optimize network traffic by choosing the best path for data packets based on the network's layout and its current conditions. Broadcom's Tomahawk series is tailored specifically for Ethernet switches, and their Jericho line is for more complex networks that need core and edge computing. This past quarter, Broadcom's networking revenue grew by 44% year over year, after they doubled the number of switches that they sold. And Broadcom's stock is up nearly 60% year to date. Broadcom may not be another NVIDIA, but honestly, that's a good thing too, because it's exposed to all the growth that AI has to offer in a different way than NVIDIA, Ethernet versus InfiniBand, and ASICs versus GPUs. That's why holding Broadcom and NVIDIA is a great way to have your cake and eat it too. By the way, the global market for AI ASICs is expected to roughly 10x in size by 2033, which is a compound annual growth rate of around 30% for the next 10 years. ASICs currently represent 16% of the total data center accelerator market, and I expect that to meaningfully increase over time as AI applications get more diverse and power consumption becomes an even bigger issue than it is today. Marvell is the second largest company in the ASIC market, only behind Broadcom, with around a 14% share. So holding both Broadcom and Marvell stock means owning roughly 75% of the entire ASIC market. According to a recent call with Wall Street analysts, Marvell currently has around a 10% share of the overall data center accelerator market and expects to double that over the next few years. Back in May, Marvell confirmed that they partnered with at least three hyperscale customers, which analysts currently believe are Amazon Web Services, Tranium and Inferentia chips, Microsoft Azure's Maya accelerators, and Google's ARM-based Axion data center CPUs. And going back to our original power problem, Google claims their Axion CPU is 60% more power efficient than comparable x86 chips that are produced by AMD and Intel. But compute is just one side of the story. Moving data over a massive network is also extremely energy intensive. Picking the right network switches can reduce power consumption by around 30%. Marvell dominates this space with a range of products like optical and copper transceivers, high performance optical interconnects for data centers, and a broad range of Ethernet switches. In March, Marvell extended their long standing partnership with TSMC to develop their next generation of AI infrastructure products using TSMC's 2 nanometer process technology. It's worth noting that Marvell's stock hasn't done nearly as well as Broadcom, since Marvell's total revenues have been in decline. But under the hood, Marvell's revenue mix is shifting substantially, with data centers now accounting for almost 70% of their total revenue last quarter, up from around 33% at the start of 2023. Kind of like how Nvidia saw a sharp decline in their revenue when they pivoted from gaming GPUs to data center chips a few years ago. Case in point, Marvell's data center business grew 7% quarter over quarter and a whopping 87% year over year. 
And for this quarter, Marvell forecasts data center revenues to accelerate even faster, thanks to their custom AI chip programs, which are beginning to ramp right now. The AI boom is expected to increase data center demand by 15 to 20 percent every year through 2030, at which point they could reach a whopping 16 percent of total U.S. power consumption. That's the same demand as about two-thirds of all the homes in the United States. And while every generation of NVIDIA's GPUs is more efficient than the last, AI has caused the overall demand for data center power to far exceed supply. It will take much more than efficient cooling solutions from companies like Vertiv or the ASICs for AI computing designed by Broadcom and Marvell. But in my opinion, all three of these companies will end up being important pieces of the puzzle. And that's why it's so important to understand the science behind the stocks. And if you want to see what else I'm investing in to get rich without getting lucky, check out this video next. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.